Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Laura, and I'm joining you with the Dutton S. Peterson Memorial Library in Odessa. And I'm going to give everyone a few minutes to join us, but then we'll get started with some stories and some art. So yeah, find yourself a comfy spot and get ready for some stories. So I think I'll start by going over the stories that we'll read today. And they include a theme of New Year's because this week we will celebrate the new year of 2022. So at the library we have a few books on that theme, including P. Bear's New Year's Party by Paul Owen Lewis. Read that one. We'll also read New Clothes for New Year's Day by Hyun Ju Bae. And we'll also read a story about art called The Dot by Peter H. Reynolds which will hopefully inspire some ideas for an art project, which will be a calendar, because why not have a calendar for the new year? Um, so here you could pick up a copy of this January calendar at the library. And if you don't have that yet, um, we can just do some art with paper and all that you need is a pen or pencil, marker, anything to write with. So we'll do that after our stories. So the first story for today is P. Bear's New Year's Party, a counting book by Paul Owen Lewis. Mr. P. Bear decided to have a New Year's party and sent invitations to his best dressed friends. At one o'clock, New Year's Eve, oh, a whale arrived. At two o'clock, a couple of horses. Can we count the horses? One, two. At three o'clock, a few dairy cows. I thought you know what a cow says. Moo! One, two, three. At four o'clock, a herd of zebras. Count the zebras. One, two, three, four. At five o'clock, a bunch of panda bears. <laughs> Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. At six o'clock, a half dozen mountain goats. Let's count those. One, two, three, four, five. Six. At six o'clock. At seven o'clock, several snow leopards. Mm. Let's count those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven o'clock. At eight o'clock, a pack of Dalmatian dogs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At nine o'clock, lots of skunks. Woo! Might be a smelly party. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. At nine o'clock. Getting later now. At ten o'clock, a flock of geese. Ooh, wow. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. At eleven o'clock, a crowd of cats. Can you say what a, a cat sound makes? Let's count them. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Whoop! Blending right in there. <laughs> and just before twelve midnight, a dozen penguins. Wow. Let's count those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, at 12 o'clock. Happy New Year! What a party! Oh my gosh! How many guests came to the party? So maybe if you're doing math, you can add up all of these numbers, 1 through 12, to see how many guests came to the party. Lots. <laughs> that was our first story that you can find in the library if you'd like to read it again. Our next one is New Clothes for New Year's Day by Hyun Ju Bae. Now this story takes place in a part of the world far from here, which is so nice to learn about how other people celebrate New Year's Day. So, new clothes for New Year's Day, dedicated to Dad. Today is New Year's Day. It's a new year. It's a new day. And it's a new morning. It's the first day for the beginning of everything. The new sun hasn't shown up, and there are new clouds in the sky. I hope we have new snow, too. But the very best new things of all, the new things, are... My new skirt and jacket. Mother made new clothes for New Year's Day. Aren't they beautiful? A crimson silk skirt, a rainbow striped jacket, delicate socks embroidered with flowers, a hair ribbon of red and gold. I could hardly sleep last night, but today I finally get to wear my wonderful new clothes. Finally! Stretch on tiptoes to reach the hanger. Oof. Hold one side in each hand, then arms spread wide, wrap the rims and skirt around, take the sash and tie a knot. One after the other, put on the cotton socks with their red flower embroidery. Make sure the designs are in the right place. Oops! Whoops! There's a beautiful drawing of her inside her house. Okay. 
arms go in carefully, one at a time, into the rainbow striped jacket. Pull the right side first and cover it with the left. It may be tied tightly, how pretty, or left untied. Put a headband over neatly braided hair. In front of the mirror, fasten the hair ribbon of red and gold. Ah, it's not, it's not easy. That's pretty. Another illustration. Time for the flowered shoes, a gift from father, and the warm furry vest with gold decorations, plus a special winter hat to help keep warm. It's cold outside. Put on the new shoes, the new flower embroidered shoes, the dazzling new shoes. They fit perfectly. Slip on the furry vest. Hang a charm and a lucky bag on the jacket string. It's good luck. Need good luck for the new year. Put on the black satin winter hat. Everything is new from head to toe. A new year, a new day, a new morning, new clothes. We start the new year with new things, new things for the year older me. Time to go, oh. New snow for New Year's Day. Do you have snow where you are? I don't see any here. The perfect day to make New Year's calls and to wish everyone good luck in the new year. the end of the story, but we have a little more information about this story in the book. So New Year's Day. New Year's Day, celebrating the start of the Lunar New Year, is one of the most important holidays in Korea. New Year's Day starts earlier than most days. Families rise early, hold a ceremony to honor their ancestors, give the first bow of the New Year, and eat rice cake soup for breakfast. The soup is very important because Koreans do not count age on their birthdays, but on New Year's Day. They become one year older only after they've eaten this special soup. After bref breakfast, it's time to get together with relatives and wish each other a happy New Year as children give a bow to their elders. There are also special New Year's clothes for New Year's Day, and it's a lot of fun to wear them while making New Year's visits and New Year's vows. Dressing up. Of all the New Year's clothes worn on New Year's Day, those worn by children are especially beautiful. Shall we take a look at the New Year's clothes the little girl in this book wears? She wears a crimson red silk skirt a rainbow striped jacket, and a furry vest. She puts on cotton socks and shoes, both embroidered with flowers. She also wears a headband and ties a hair ribbon 
of red and gold to the end of her braids. Her hat protects her from the cold as she makes her New Year's visits. She also has a lucky charm and a bag to hang from her jacket string. If she had a brother, he would be dressed in clothes just as beautiful as hers. Special pants and jacket, a hat, a coat, and an overcoat. So what is the significance of this? In the past, women used to make their family's special New Year's clothes with great care and devotion. That is why the clothes for New Year's Day are not only beautiful, but also hold special meaning. For example, the colors in the rainbow striped jacket represent things such as water, fire, metal, wood, and earth. The striped pattern represents the wish that the, bear, the wearer be in harmony, just like the harmonious colors. The embroidery on the socks is for good luck. The bat embroidered on the charm is in Chinese character, which has the same pronunciation as luck in Korean. And here are those characters here. The new clothes a new little girl in this book is wearing have all these elements. What can we tell that we can tell that her mother is very good at sewing and that her family is wealthy enough to provide a charm and a pair of flower embroidered shoes. This doesn't mean though that everyone's new clothes need to be this fancy. What matters most is the meaning of the new clothes, even if they are plain. The maker's wish is for the wearer to forget unhappy events of the previous year and to have a happy new year. And the wearer's resolution is to be a better person in the new year as he or she turns one year older. That is what new clothes for New Year's Day means. So a very special book indeed. And we can think about that too. How can we be better people in the new year? And maybe make some New Year's resolutions. At the back of this book, as we finish it, it says, I wish you good luck. And I wish you good luck too for your New Year. Our final book for today is called The Dot. And this is by Peter H. Reynolds. So I chose this book because with the new year, it kind of feels like a blank page, and that's what this story is about. So, the dot. Art class was over, but Vashti sat glued to her chair. Her paper was empty. Vashti's teacher leaned over the blank paper. Ah, a polar bear in a snowstorm, she said. Very funny, said Vashti. I just can't draw. Have you ever had that feeling? I have, for sure. Her teacher smiled. Just make a mark and see where it takes you. Vashti grabbed a marker and gave the paper a good, strong jab. There! Her teacher picked up the paper and studied it carefully. Hmm. She pushed the paper toward Vashti and quietly said, Now sign it. Vashti thought for a moment, well, maybe I can't draw, but I can sign my name. The next week, when Vashti walked into art class, she was surprised to see what was hanging above her teacher's desk. It was the little dot. She had drawn her dot all framed in swirly gold. Hmm, I 
can make a better dot than that. She opened her never before used set of watercolors and set to work. Vashti painted and painted a red dot, a purple dot, a yellow dot, a blue dot. The blue mixed with the yellow. She discovered that she could make a green dot. Vashti kept experimenting, lots of little dots and many colors. If I can make little dots, I can make big dots too. Vashti splashed her colors with a bigger brush on bigger paper to make bigger dots. Vashti even made a dot by not painting a dot. Whoa! What a creative person. At the school art show a few weeks later, Vashti's many dots made quite a splash. Vashti noticed a little boy gazing up at her. You're a really great artist. I wish I could draw, he said. I bet you can, said Vashti. Me? No, not me. I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. Vashti smiled. She handed the boy a blank sheet of paper. Show me. The boy's pencil shook as he drew his line. Vashti stared at the boy's squiggle, and then she said, Sign it. This book was dedicated to Mr. Matson, the author's seventh grade math teacher who dared me to make my mark. So I love how this book really shows that all of us are artists, no matter what kind of mark we're making. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look like anything. Um, so this will lead us into our art project which is a calendar or a blank sheet of paper, if that's what you have. And above the calendar is this big open space, which can be used to draw or paint or color, anything that you would like for this first month in our new year. So I'm gonna just show some examples Maybe we're inspired by what we read today, and you could illustrate your New Year's party, like our first book. What kind of party would you have for the New Year? Would you have lots of animals in it, or toys, or balloons, or would you draw your new clothes for your New Year? Or can we just use, like in the last story, dots and lines to draw something for our new year? So I'll just show an example. You can follow along with me or make your own drawing. I'm just going to be using a pen today. And since we have all of this space, I'm going to do what Vashti did and just draw a dot to start with. And then, like her friend, I'm going to add some lines. Because when I think of the new year, I think of fireworks and nighttime with stars. And these dots and, and bursts of lines could be either, I guess. Fireworks or stars in the night sky. And I'm just going to keep going, making those so simple. And 
Anybody can do this. Don't need any special skills. Maybe some are are smaller. Maybe they're further away. And maybe some are bigger because they're closer up. Or brighter. Yeah, that's a big firework. And maybe we wonder, where is this night sky? Maybe there's some kind of a landscape underneath it. So I'm going to add some rolling hills, like what I might see out my window, in the Finger Lakes. Maybe it's a little mountain. It's just a line, though. It doesn't have to be a perfect line. It's more interesting if it's not, I think. We have a little landscape with our night sky. And maybe there's a house on this hill somewhere. Maybe just one little house that I'll draw. There's the lines again. Got the walls and up to the roof. Like that. And maybe we add a line for the roof and a little door. So we have a house on our hill with a night sky. And maybe we want to add some texture. I like to make little dots to have texture. So maybe I'll connect these stars with little dots. You can do anything you want. You could add dots to the, the hills, like snow, or maybe grass. There's no snow. You add some color if you have crayons or markers. If you want to stop by the library, we have lots of those you could borrow to add some color to your picture. Drawing. Oh, you're looking. This one feels very lonely up there. I connect with some dots. Some swirly stars in the night sky. Maybe a little house, maybe a hill. What else do we need in this night sky for New Year's Eve? Maybe I'll add some shading to the hills. Those lines, more lines. One nice thing you can do with lines is draw them one way and draw them the other for cross hatching. There's just so much that you can do with the base, very basics dots and lines, like in our book that we read. In this activity, drawing, you can do at any age, if we have older visitors with us, you want to get out some paper and pen, do 
do some drawing. You can keep going if you want, but I think I'll stop there. And you can fill in this calendar. We filled in some story our story times on Tuesdays. So we'll be here again on Facebook Live next week and the week after and after on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. But you can fill in other things on your calendar birthdays maybe, special events. I like how on the 13th is make your dream come true day. How sweet is that? <laughs> so with that, I think we will wrap up our story time for today. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me. I'm Laura again. And you can find us at the Odessa Library with the books I read today and the calendar sheet and coloring supplies and I hope to see you next week too at 10 a.m. right here on Facebook Live. Have a great day everybody.